Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being continued listeners of the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. Many of the episodes that we are currently releasing were pre-COVID-19, literally up to the week of, and they were scheduled to be rolled out over time. But with the COVID-19, we had a little lull, so some of these are even a little more or pre-COVID wall, so I would like to say. But I want to thank you. Make sure that you're maintaining social distancing and being safe and be very conscious of yourself. This is the time you've been given where you can really just kind of find out who you are. At least that's how I'm doing it. That was one of the reasons for the slowdown and release of episodes is because I just took a step back. Anyway, you can always find the show at emmettmuckles.com or any podcast aggregator or just search for The Billionaire Lifestyle with Emmett Muckles. Enjoy the show. Welcome to The Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or emmettmuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with Emmett Muckles Tizai. You know, I really want you guys to be really safe. We are going through some difficult and challenging times. Um, it's almost biblical, but I really need you guys to actually do something. And it's really simple. I don't know what you believe and I don't know how you are, but I'm going to put it from my perspective. What I need you to do is sit down and get quiet and say thank you for the things that you do have. I literally need you to do this. I need you to just sit down. I need you to take inventory of your life, not the things that you have, but your health, your family, your level of comfort that a lot of Americans take for granted because they have not been outside this country. But I need you to take it in stride so that you can do what's right for yourself and your family. Now, let's get to a little bit of business stuff, because as this progresses and we get through it, we're going to go back to our lives, hopefully, in some capacity. And we're going to go back to making sustenance for our families and friends. And, you know, there are some questions you need to ask yourself. And I have here today, Jeff Redondo, to help us decipher that. What's going on, Jeff? How's it going? How are you doing? I'm doing well. So, you know, you go through some things about entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and their level of anxiety and fright. First of all, let's give your backstory. So what brought you to your now? Sure. So um, I actually... Uh, was in the nonprofit field for a long time and then doing the whole nine to five thing and um, really not knowing, you know, the outside world of entrepreneurship. And um, I ended up working for a nonprofit and getting laid off doing fundraising. And my business partner at the time, or my current, still my current business partner, is like, hey, would you be interested in working for, for me? And I was I wasn't real sure about that <laughs> because I'd never done the entrepreneur thing, and um, I said, "Yeah, let's give it a shot and see what happens." And so, um, ever that was my last day of doing a nine to five thing, and um, I've been doing an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur and business owner ever since. So, it's been a very uh, roller coaster as with every uh, business you own. Yeah, as life is a roller coaster. So let me ask you one thing. Did you have to have a mindset shift when you switched over from one to the other? Oh, yeah. It, you know, I'll be completely honest. You know, the, my first probably six months to a year, it was really difficult. It was really, um, I was really struggling with it. And it was not just the point of, oh, I don't have the cushy nine to five anymore. It's, um, understanding that you're having to work late nights and weekends and understanding that, you know, trying to find quality clients is not as easy as you would think <laughs> or trying to find, you know, 
create a new project or a new product is not as easy as you would think and trying to balance the books and balance the budget and trying to create partnerships for, you know, with different vendors and stuff like that, you know, um, it's not as easy as you think. So that was a, that was a big uh, eye opening experience for me. So you've deciphered this. So why do you think many other entrepreneurs, solopreneurs are afraid of really getting deep because, you know, a lot of people fail because they don't look at their financials right? or, or yeah. understand their personal financials. So right. why do you think, you know, because I see people who go on out, but you never hear them talk about their financial strategies. So why do you think so many entrepreneurs are really afraid to look at it? Is it like a thing of failure that if they really look at it or something? Yeah. You know, I think, you know, when I when I stepped into the world, you know, we actually me and my partner owned an accounting firm, a CFO accounting firm, and um, when I stepped into the world of accounting, I never knew what that looked like. I never had any idea, and you know, um, I when I think what it boils down to is, you know, most people go into entrepreneurship with this idea of like oh, I'm going to be able to sit by the beach and drink my Mai Tais all day. <laughs> and that's the, what they promote. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 like the, you know, the ideal thing. And then when you have to start worrying about, you know, where are you going to, you know, pay your office rent from or where are you going to pay for your, um, you know, your new Zoom account that you have to open up right. or um, all these different expenses, it's not as easy as think as you think. And so, you know, people have this, you know, idea that, uh, you know, being a business owner or entrepreneur is ultimately freedom. And if people start looking at their financials, they start getting this, this fear of like, am I really free? <laughs> they start thinking about like, you know, I'm working 80 hours a week and I'm making zero profits. Is this supposed to be freedom? Right. And so people get so scared to look at their financials because it's they they were they they realize why in the hell I might as well go back to my nine to five. But how you can know? that how can how can looking at your financials uh, help you to prosper? You know, because you're really keeping track of you know what where you're going. You know, making sure that your you know that your profits that your profit margins are well, making sure that you have the opportunity to hire people, making sure that you can um, create a new product or have a new income stream, making sure that you pay the right amount for the right people. So you have a lot more freedom to know your financials than when you don't know your financials. And um, so, you know, one of the best stories I can tell you about um, is, you know, one of our clients, he's a seven figure business owner and we had to tell him he made seven figures. And to me, that was <laughs> right. Yeah, Wait a minute, he to didn't, me, that was astonishing. So this person didn't know how much revenue they were making. No. And the reason why is because they're, you know, they're, they were a solopreneur you know, or an entrepreneur and all they were focused about what all they were focused on was bringing in the next customer or bringing in the next deal or bringing in the next sale or how do I create more sales or how do I, um, you know, keep going and moving forward versus actually taking the time to figure out, you know, maybe if I look at my profit margins, I won't have to sell a new product. Or maybe if I do this thing a little bit differently, I don't have to work as hard. And so once we brought that to, to, once we brought that up to him, his mind shifted, his mind really shifted. But I mean, wouldn't this person, (laughs) this is, I know we're kind of getting deep on this one thing, (laughs) but it's just mind boggling me that you don't know how much money you or capital you have that you're working with or bringing in. I mean, doesn't his lifestyle reflect that or was he, just living at a, a very meager pace. He was just, you know, he was just, uh, uh, he was living in a good life. You know, he wasn't like, 
you know, um, living in a mansion or anything. I think he has a, you know, he had like a two or three bedroom apartment, you know, so he, he was, he didn't have any kids, you know, he had, you know, he has a, he has a, I think they're still girlfriend or girlfriend, boyfriend, but he didn't really have a lot of expenses. So um, he didn't really, you know, it, for him, it wasn't that big of a deal. He knew he was always around six figures but he didn't really realize until we actually said, no, you're at seven figures that he was like, Oh, wow. You wow. know, and it, what was that? What was the amazing thing was he actually um, started crying. <laughs> because That was one of his goals. That was one of his dreams. But you know, and that's the thing is that if you don't know your financials, you're never going to know if you've hit your goals or your dreams or not. You know, and, and many people are afraid to ask their accountants, you know, very specific questions. And I think sometimes it's because they, do, they literally don't know what to ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and part of that is I think people are, um, they're intimidated by a lot of times their, their accountants. I, that's what I think, you know. <laughs> um, are, you know, you really have to have a, a, when you're going into talking to your accountant, you have to have a sense of authority is the best way to describe it. <laughs> you know, you have to understand that you actually are the ones that own the business, that you actually own the business and that you need to actually step up to the plate and being able to answer his questions versus um, not knowing the answers. Right. So as long as you're confident when you meet with them, as long as you know your business inside and out, as long as you're able to, um, you know, you go in there prepared so you know how to read financials, you know what pieces you want to look at specifically, um, and go in there with a sense of confidence. It's, um, it's you know, meeting with your accountant is always a great thing. One of the things that I like to tell people is um, if, if you're in with your accountant and he's trying to rush you out and you only meet with him once a year, you really should be finding a new accountant because – you know, I can an account should be part of your team. Should be part of you helping with the growth of business. So a lawyer, an accountant, yeah, are the if, very minimums. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't have those people, and if you're so worried about how much you're going to spend spend them, then you really shouldn't be in business. You know, those are the like if you had to spend money anywhere, I would say it would be those two people, because more than likely, your accountants going to you know help save you money on one place and the attorney will end up saving you money in another way yeah that's true so um you know those are the two places that if you had to spend more money i would say spend in those two areas you know a lot of people don't realize in that old saying it takes money to make money at some point it becomes true there are some places there are some things that you will make some money with very little uh initial investment but at a certain point you need capital. Right. And if that capital is not, if you don't have cash flow, like Robert Kiyosaki, if you, if you don't have cash flow or if you don't know how your money, then you're right. Your business is just like, eh, eh. but so how can, how can people really detach from this and say, you know, I just have to hunker down. I have to, it's kind of like the IRS. When people hear the IRS, they immediately go defenses up even if it's just like you know you're getting a refund oh okay but people yeah, get really yeah. <laughs> people get really emotional about you know financials personal and business so what are some of the simple things that people can do to kind of help them detach from that you know uh, it's actually funny because i was just talking about this with, uh, with one of our clients and there you know there's a couple things um you know, one of the biggest things is, you know, um, it, you know, we're, we're one of the richest countries in the entire world. Yes. You know, and so if you if you frame it in that, no matter how broke you are, there's someone always there's there's someone else is always broke. More, that's broker. <laughs> right. You know, you see what I'm saying? Right. So someone that's making an average of a thirty two thousand dollar salary here in the U S it globally is, is rich. considered part of the 1%. Right. <laughs> right. So it's kind of shifting your mind about realizing, you know, that, you know, um, 
I may be broke or this may be a temporary setback, um, but I'll, you know, I'll get through it. You know, a friend of mine said something to me a couple of weeks ago and he was shaking his head. I'm like, what's wrong? He was like, do you realize if you make over 40 grand and you have a credit score over 760, you are in the one per, super 1% globally? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I was like, 40 grand, that's not a lot. He was like, right. He was like, but globally, you are basically a billionaire. He was like, yeah. And he said, let me explain it to you. I was like, please do. He was like, if you make $40,000 a year and you have over a $760 um, credit score, he's like, do you know you can just go get like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 just on a signature? I was like, yeah. get out of here. He was like, yeah, but most business people don't realize this because they're trying to use their own money instead of using someone else's money. Yeah. You know, just like the thing that's going on with the, um, the COVID-19 thing, you know, it's like there's a lot of loan programs out there that you don't even you're you don't even have to show your credit score. Right. Yeah. You can actually get loans that are forgivable right now. And so that's what I'm talking about, finding your resources and realizing that you're not as broke as you think you are, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so that's one, one thing I always, you know, I always talk to people about the other, the other, the other big one f- for me is, um, you know, I, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, you know, whatever your, whatever your, you know, whatever your opinion of him is, you know, he's, you know, he's one of the people I look up to. And, um, you know, he talks about where energy flows, when energy flows, attention goes. Right. Right. So if you're always thinking about how broke you are, you always will be broke. You always will be thinking about like, if you're always worried about, if you're always anxious about financials, if you're always overwhelmed about doing a budget, if you're always worried about like where your next client is coming from, you're always going to be nervous you're always going to be anxious overwhelmed and worried yeah that's true you know one of the things that i did is i had to find out what my number was Mm -hmm. and what i mean by that what does it take for me to to be go for me to just say okay i'm good and when i looked at it and this took some things some time to do actually it took me uh i did this exercise I grabbed all my bills, all my things, all my payables for a year. And then I plotted them out. And then I took an average. And then I looked at it and said, what's unnecessary? What's a luxury? And I took those out. And then I came up with this base number per month that I need to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus 20% for incidentals. I was like, that's not that much. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing is so many people, you know, like everyone has their, their, their one thing, you know, everyone has the one thing that, you know, no matter how broke you get, you're going to get this one thing. And mine's just, (laughs) and and mine is Starbucks coffee. Right. I I have, you know, I have, you know, they've, you know, I'm, I live in California and I don't know where you're at, but you know, here in California, they're all closed, you know, and you're in Southern California too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah I was the just there. State, they're closed, yeah. And Starbucks are closed throughout the state. And so, you know, of course, I'm like, I'm like kind of Jones and like Starbucks. <laughs> why didn't, well, so why didn't you just go to the, why didn't you just go buy you some a uh, coffee maker and some Starbucks coffee? Well, well that's what I'm doing now because <laughs> I have to. But but my, my my whole point is that my one thing is Starbucks coffee. Right. You know, so I have to have my Starbucks and yeah, it's three bucks or it's four bucks, whatever it is. That is my go-to, you know, no matter, because for me, that's certain, for me, that's certainty. Right. You know, I'm always going to have my Starbucks coffee and, you know, if I always have my Starbucks coffee, then I always know that I have, that I, um, that I'm able to, to live my, you know, to continue to live my life the way I want it to live. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so I'm an African-American male and I come from a very African-American neighborhood. And I watched this happen 
I watched as through like the 80s and the 90s, um, what happened was we start moving to corporations for our goods and services, Mm -hmm. which means the corner store is not relevant anymore. Um, There's a mega cleaners here. There's big box store for electronics, wash machine. So you saw the entrepreneurship fall through the 80s and 90s. And then after 2008, you started to see a reemergence of the entrepreneur. What education do people need about starting their business and finances to get going? I, to me, that's a really um, interesting question. Because <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I threw no, that. No, no. <laughs> no, it's actually, you know, the reason why I say that is because everyone, it, it, my belief is that everyone nowadays thinks they're an entrepreneur. Yep. Right. You can have an Uber driver and they could be doing like some writing on the side and they could be doing like, you know, maybe co- coffee, you know, they could be at Starbucks and they're, like I'm an entrepreneur because I have three different jobs. Right. Right. To me, that's not an entrepreneur. You know, an entrepreneur is someone that's able to get a business up and running. Right. And then start another business and get that up and running. Right. And start another business and get that up and running. And so each one of the businesses themselves is self self sustaining. Right. Right. So whether you have one or two or three different people, Like if you have one business and then you have one person running that business and then you have another business and you have one person running that business. So you may have a team of four or five, but each one of them is running a separate business. You know what? And that's the best definition. uh, Clearly, because I don't think many people understand this. So there's a difference between an entrepreneur, a small business owner, a micro business owner and a side hustler. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I think what has happened is people have blurred that information. But the one thing you never really hear is about the education. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, what do I need to start a business? Like, I have this idea because I actually had this, I put this call out a couple of months ago because I heard this, um, I heard, I saw this, I think it was on YouTube. It was Killer Mike, T.I., and David Banner, and they were having like a African American financial summit. So these guys are all millionaires, at least. And they're saying to this crowd, you should start businesses in your community. And I was like, rah, rah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then about 24 hours later, I was thinking about that conversation. And I said, wait a minute. They haven't said these, they said go start a business, but most people don't know about a P&L. Most people don't know about insurances for the state, just for employees. They don't know about the fees that you have to have for starting a business. So you're just telling people to go do stuff without the education. And the biggest thing was, where do you get the money? Yeah, yeah. That's the biggest question. I'm like, so if you have a great idea or a decent idea for your community, where do you go to get the money? Because you just alluded to like there's programs for businesses that are established, but outside of SBA, are there other avenues where entrepreneurs can get financing? You know, and for me, you know, for somebody that's, um, for, 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 for me, you know, building a business is understanding um, if a product is going to work or not. Right. Right. And so, you know, we always tell our, you know, the business owners, you know, startup business owners we work with, we say, go to the three apps. Family. You know what that is, right? <laughs> Family, friends, and... and fools. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right. So you go to those three people and you get, you help get, get funding that way. Right. Because those are going to three your test markets, right? If someone is going to buy your product, then it's probably going to, you know, you you have close enough personal connections with those, most of those people, yep. right? That you can go and sell them a product. Even if maybe they don't believe in the product itself, they believe enough in you. Yeah. 
right, to buy the product. So at least you can actually get some funding going there, right? And if you can't even get those people around you to support your business, you know, your business idea, whatever it looks like, yeah. then maybe you need to step back and reconsider. That's good advice. You, know? you, you, you never hear about it that way. because, But, you know, it used to be a, a very staple thing where – and in certain communities, that's how it's done. So I know in Asian communities and Latin communities, they go to their core group first, which is the three Fs. Yeah. And yeah. and they will support it because you won't get supported. They're like, no, that won't work. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because uh, I was just listening to a book, um, The Virgin Way by uh, Richard Branson. Yeah. And uh, he talks about in that book about how um, he, the first person before he starts going out and doing market research and everything else that they do with the company is he goes to his wife Yeah. and he asks his wife, he's like, what do you think of this idea? And she'll either give him a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you know? And she said, he says, one time I asked her um, uh, about, um, I don't remember what they called it, but it was virgin condoms. <laughs> Right, and she, and so they were going to brand it virgin con virgin condoms, right? Right, and so she immediately gives him this look of like this is not going to work. And we're talking Richard Branson, right? right? It was an oxymoron. <laughs> it was just too much. She was like, yeah, no. yeah. And she's like, that's not going to work, right? And so um, they ended up changing the name, and they ended up getting out of ultimately out of that business. But he said, if I would have just listened to her advice, right? And instead of trying to like go into the condom business, just call my call it quits there. I would have saved tons of money, right? Right. And that's that's the whole point of the story. You know, that's the whole point of asking those people. Because if you can't even get their buy-in, you know, yeah. how are you going to get you know John Q. Public? Yeah, that's tr that's true. You know? So, where can people find you if they have questions or need your services? Sure, you can actually visit our website website invictus-advisors.com um, say, say it one more time invictus dash advisors.com okay so we actually do accounting taxes we actually are um, helping people right now manage the complexities of getting the um, covid loan program stuff so um, if that's something that interests you you can visit our website and you can actually get a um, book a link to um, set a time to talk with us about if you're eligible for those programs because some of those programs for small business owners are really good and they're forgivable loans. So if you have a small business, <coughs> excuse me, to have a couple employees, but you really need some funding to, you know, to get you through this tough time, um, there's definitely opportunities out there for you. You can either visit our website or visit the SBA website. Awesome. Do you guys do any webinars or any um, YouTube or anything like that? Facebook Live? Yeah. yeah, we do a lot of Facebook Live. So if you want to like our our um, our Facebook, um, it's Invictus Advisors is our uh, is our web our web. Uh, I mean our um, Facebook Facebook handle. <laughs> so um, you can actually do that. We do like we usually do a live every day. We do what's called lunch with a shark. Because <laughs> our uh, my business partner, his name is. Uh, it goes by the shark CFO. <laughs> so every day we do an episode of a bunch of the shark and we do business tips and that. And that. Awesome. We talk about, you know, um, today we talked about how to, um, you know, keep, keep momentum, you know, while you're working from home, you know, three tips about, you know, developing a routine, you know, when you're at home, when you're working from home. So we have a lot of different, uh, great resources on, on our web page and also on our, on our Facebook well, this is so awesome. I want to thank you so much for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. No problem. Any Anytime, Emma. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. We've reached the conclusion, but it's just the beginning. Really, people, uh, this is a time for you to kind of step back um, and re-initiate yourself with faith. I don't know who you pray to, but here is something that we need to do. 
We need to have gratitude. We need to give thanks. And we need to have or ask for guidance. Because here's something that I've learned a long time ago. If I go back to 1991, the things that I was worrying about then, I can't even remember what they are. So I want you to think of it that way. I want you to have that humility and I want you to give thanks and gratitude and ask for guidance. So meditation is when God talks to you. Prayer is when you talk to God. Go with that and think about this. What you're worried about today, will you be worried about it in a year, two years, or five years? And most of all, go to the mirror, look at yourself, and literally say out loud, I love you, which is me, which means you love you. Till next time, love you all. Peace.